everybody, everyone is a conspiracy theorist nowadays. Why do I say that? Because when it gets to the point where regardless of what political party in the world you're affiliated with, or regardless of what your religious beliefs are, or whether you believe in scientific research or not, regardless of that, the fact that both sides are currently questioning the foundation of our very institutions, not just in the Western world, but around the world, automatically makes everyone a conspiracy theorist. And I say this, not because I want to, not because I want to just put everyone into one big encapsulating umbrella. I say this because the fact that we've been lied to for so long, not just about aliens and the paranormal. Let's put all that stuff aside for a second. Let's talk about day-to-day life. A quick example. Do you know for how many years sugar companies and scientists were working and in cahoots with one another? For years and years and years, scientists were paid to flip their data, their, their real data, into fake data so they can tell the world that sugar was good for you. I believe there's a documentary called Sugar Code or something like that that explains it. But anyways, let's jump into Project Eden. I just had to get that out there. Now, before I do, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Maria Jasmine. She's a big fan of the show, and uh, thank you always for watching and supporting. Again, if you guys want a shout out, just let me know. Project Eden, I would dare to say, and I know I say this every few weeks, but it is probably one of the biggest, most significant episodes I've done yet. Why do I say that? Okay, there's a lot to break down, so just bear with me here, please, guys. We know for a fact that this whole thing with Russia and Donald Trump, and this is not a political uh, episode, but I have to bring this up, is kind of done and over with. Whether there was collusion or not, that's not my business. That's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm trying to say is every country always needs an enemy to justify pushing a certain agenda forward. So now that's over with. Now it seems like, coincidentally, in the last handful of days alone, China has been the main focus. Again, China just turned on their artificial sun at the same time the U.S. just reported, as I reported in this morning's episode, that they are gene, essentially gene splicing and experimenting with superhuman hybrids and different forms of genetic mutation in order to create the ultimate super soldier. Now, what does this have to do with the Vatican and DARPA? Very, very simple. This has been going on for a very long time. Now, if we pay attention and we look very closely at the evidence, what we're going to find here is that the Vatican and the United States military, but specifically the U.S. military, have been in cahoots for so long. Now, according to one of the amendments within the Constitution, it says that the marriage of church and state, off the top of my head, I apologize, I don't recall which, which const- amendment it is, but... The marriage of church and state is not allowed, meaning that the church or certain religions should not, or all religions for that matter, should not be involved with government. But that amendment seems to be completely ignored by the elites, by the politicians, and even by the Vatican themselves and the Catholic Church. With that being said, in the last two years alone, there has been a stark increase, and I mean increase like like crazy, in the amount of people that the Vatican is training to perform exorcisms. Why do I say this? Why do I bring this up? In the last two years alone, since 2018, and I have the articles that I'm putting up right now to show you guys, the Vatican has increased the amount of people, not just priests, but they've opened a whole course and program into teaching people how to perform exorcisms. And the ones that get very good don't end up becoming priests, or if they're already priests, they don't end up excelling within the Vatican. They're being sent to DARPA. Why? Why is that the case? One of the reasons that I think that's been so covertly undercover for so long that I think is slowly starting to come out now on purpose uh, in a public disinformation psychological warfare aspect is that it's more than just politicians wanting to believe in God and believe in the Christian faith. The Vatican has knowledge and understanding that they that DARPA needs and vice versa. And when I say DARPA, I don't mean just DARPA specifically. I'm talking about the Pentagon, the CIA, the whole black budget umbrella right there. With that being said, I think it's gotten to a point, whether it was told from us by extraterrestrials, particularly the Nordics or not, that we live in an extremely advanced mathematical simulation. Now, I know that's hard for some people to grasp, and I respect that. I understand that. Not because it goes against your beliefs, but it's just hard to think, why would we be so minuscule in a universe that is so advanced? And I understand that. Now, with that being said, I also want to say that when you think about it, 
it's essentially the fact that all scientists publicly are pretty split with physis, um, physicists, quantum physicists, what have you. They're 50-50 on the fact that we may live in an extremely advanced simulation. Now, assuming we do, the idea, for the sake of this conversation and this episode, the idea would be that spirituality, not religion, but spirituality, there's a big difference, harnesses the science that we cannot yet understand. Now, that is not to say that one replaces the other, but as a matter of fact, in many cases, they are indeed one in the same. And what I understand from my connection and my research here is that DARPA, the CIA, the US government, the military industrial complex, they understand this. The Vatican understands this as well. They need one another. They need each other. That's the big deal here. Now, the thing behind all of this and the concept here is that we know for a fact that DARPA has been working on super soldier programs, nothing new. They've been working on using telepathy to communicate and what have you. But the deep connection here is that because of the fact that exorcisms have been increasing in the last handful of years on the spiritual side of things, that is the Vatican's public reason to justify them training more people to perform exorcisms. And that's fine. I think, honestly, if people are literally becoming possessed, I think they need to be helped, and I completely support that. However, they're exploiting and harnessing the front-end justification, the front-end reasoning, to justify the back-end cover-up. And I'm not saying the front-end is not important. People who legitimately get possessed need to be uh, handled and taken care of in the best way they possibly could with whatever religion or whatever spirituality is harnessed. I'm not, that's, I'm not trying to get into that. What I'm trying to say here is that spirituality and the military, maybe not even now, but uh, maybe years ago, are starting to realize or have already realized that spirituality is essentially harnessing the abilities within this world simulation matrix whatever you want to call it that we live in and so what i want to do here is i want to reference an article that i'm putting up on the screen right now for you guys on youtube uh, uh, from the drive.com and the headline is these three companies will build drones to carry the air force's skyborg ai computer brain now this is where it gets complicated so i may in fact have a whole playlist coming in the future surrounding these different projects because it's almost like it's umbrellas within umbrellas here. Now, Skyborg, as scary as that sounds, is in fact an artificially uh, an artificial intelligence that harnesses the natural frequencies of the Earth. I can't say for a fact uh, of space in the universe, but of Earth at the very least, harnesses the frequencies to function on its own without the need of a power source, without even the, the need of any type of solar power source for that matter. So the world could blow up, and still, as long as there's magnetic frequencies, this AI will remain. And this is kind of scary. I mean, it does kind of remind me of Skynet from Terminator. Maybe it might remind you guys of something else as well. But the purpose of all this is to interconnect and harness this reality that we live in or this simulation that we live in to use for telepathy, to create an artificially made self-thinking, I guess we could call it being in existence that is that literally listens to whichever it's whatever commander is programmed to be put in place let us say in this particular case the united states to oversee in a certain way i guess we can call it acting like god so to speak to oversee the rest of the planet now i'm not saying before you guys say well holy crap this is terrible this is when it gets iffy. I'm not saying this is a good thing, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Not because I don't have an opinion. In this particular case, I don't know enough to say, but I do want to say this. It's all about context and how it is harnessed. We can't control that. The most we can do is speculate. The best I can do is report it, and the best that you guys can do is come to your best conclusions. And unfortunately, we, know we have no power over how this will go. And maybe, in some cases, there are better minds than us that are working in these particular facilities that may, in fact, be a good reason behind justifying doing this. But at the same time, <clears throat> excuse me, this AI computer brain called Skyborg, I would even dare to say it's not AI. When you develop something that can understand how to harness what, <clears throat> excuse me, what is all around us, what makes, what makes up 95% of the universe, this so-called dark matter, when that can be harnessed, you're essentially powering yourself. Why would you listen to anyone when you're an AI? Now, 
let's get into the next part, which is, again, I pulled up these articles probably earlier in the episode, but it has to do with the the, the Vatican again. So again, according to theguardian.com, the Vatican to hold exorcist training course after, quote, rise in possessions. These exorcists are being sent to DARPA, I think, I, I could be very wrong, I think because they are being used to harness telepathy and to harness gravitational and magnetic frequencies on humans, not on technology, on humans. Now, one of the big agreements made, according to Paul Hellyer, the former Canadian defense minister who just did an interview as the day of, as of the day I'm recording this, which is December 9th, just did an interview yesterday night on another YouTube channel about minimum four different alien species that are in contractual obligations with the United States, Canada, Israel, what have you, the major countries. Now, part of that contract is that they can live amongst us. And part of that contract is that they can also not do what they want, but essentially they have the same rights and freedoms that humans do have here on earth. But the whole thing behind this is that if humanity ever gets to a point where things are really screwed up, they will get involved. They wanted to get involved before, but they weren't insisting because they respect the fact that it is our planet. Apparently, according to Paul Hellyer, they said that we inhabit one of the most beautiful and life-giving planets in the known universe, even according to this alleged galactic federation. And so when you have someone like the former Israeli defense space minister saying this, you have someone like the former Canadian defense minister who said this, I believe, in 20. 14, but he's coming out and doing interviews again. Clearly, clearly something is going on here. We have the China super soldier program. We have the China uh, fusion reactor program. We have all these different things going on. And so this is what I mean when I say that everybody's a conspiracy theorist, because when we take a look here, what we're going to find is that we are questioning everything. We're questioning the core foundations. And so when the Vatican sends its exorcist to DARPA, what's happening here is a sudden spike and electromagnetic frequencies all across the world. And so what I'm trying to say here is this. I don't know exactly what they're being used for precisely, but there have been a sudden detection of through whether it's thermal vision or many different public satellites that have detected massive amounts of energies, particularly coming out of the United States, that connect with the deep underground military bases in a general geographical location. Again, I did an episode on that a couple days ago. It's a bit difficult to prove, but we can understand that something is happening there. Now, these exorcists are the ones producing these energy, th this type of energy that is being detected on the public satellites. Why do I say that? Because people think that it is the usage of some type of weapon. No, it is the usage of multiple people harnessing the telepathic abilities that every single human has. Except it has been suppressed. How, why, and when has it been suppressed? I don't know, so I'm not going to say it could be it could have been sometime throughout ancient history i mean it's pretty clear that we're at a point where human humanity seems to be regurgitating itself in a certain state of amnesia and so that cannot be denied now when the vatican sends these exorcists these um newly trained exorcists to darpa they then use the underground military bases to and and the mach 2 speed trains underneath that connect most of these bases if not all of them to send them where they need to go for whatever program or testing is required. And so what's happening here is that the marriage of church and state, of religion and politics, is intertwined not because they want to be, but because in a certain sense they have to be. And they know that they need one another, and right now they cannot afford to be at odds with each other, especially given on the front end, on the public level, the divide within uh, with what's going on right now. And so... There's so many things going on that have been, it seems to be leading up to some type of massive revelation, whether it's Jack Vallée on the Joe Rogan podcast talking about um, the corporation that is a CIA front corporation, whether it's the interview with Paul Hellyer last night, whether it's the former Israeli space defense minister. Again, we have to play both sides. We have to play devil's advocate. We can say that this former Canadian defense minister, look, he's 97 years old, so maybe he's senile. Also, the former Israeli space defense minister is 87. So we have to play the other side of the card here, too. We have to say, look, maybe they're going senile. Maybe they're being paid. Maybe they're being told. Now is the time to say this. 
maybe, of course, they knew about this all along, but they were given an ultimatum. Either we ruin you and your family's life, or worse, you get murdered, or you wait X amount of years to slowly but surely say things. I don't think this is a coincidence. I'm not saying every little thing is planned. I'm not saying that there's some secret power at play here that made Jack Vallée go on the Joe Rogan podcast and say those things. I'm not saying there's a secret hand at play saying that Paul Hellyer came out there, but they overall have an idea of what they can reveal and when. And that's my point of what I'm trying to make here. With that being said, unfortunately, I wish I could explain more as it pertains to what particular exercises or programs are being conducted once the exorcist gets sent to DARPA. But based on public documents, and I'm putting it up right now for you guys, according to, this is, if we take a look here, researchgate.net, and the other document is from DARPA.mil. So literally DARPA themselves. They talk about DARPA and the Brain Initiative. Now, they hint at the fact that they are recruiting new people for the Brain Initiative. They don't say who, they don't say what age, they don't say when, they don't say how. And so there's a bunch of different things going on here that seem to be sliding in subliminally with that of the front end publication of these documents. And so what we have to look at is not just these exorcists, but we have to look at what else is happening here. We allegedly have a, a species of Nordics, a couple different ones. We have the greys who are probes or, or biological robots. We have a different species, allegedly the Anunnaki who are blue, whose bodies have been found ripped up in, in recent past. We have animals that are being mutilated. So look, <clears throat> I know this might be a bit overwhelming for everybody. It's overwhelming for me. The fact that I've taken this time in this episode to cover so many different things as quickly and significantly and, and as importantly and as potently as I can it just goes to show how quickly things are moving in today's day and age. So I want you guys to please let me know what you think. There's so much more to this. There's so much more. But there's only so much I can cover in one episode until I have to space it all out. And so again, you guys have any questions or anything of the sort, please don't forget to subscribe, like, you know, the whole thing and uh, share the video too. That's probably the best thing you guys could do. And um, I always appreciate every single one of you and we will catch you tomorrow. Thank you so much.